Hello and welcome to another edition of COVID Calls. Um, I'm Chris Perejean, your, your host for today. And um, today we have a, a number of interesting guests and we'll be talking about education. So we've got Education Minister Owen Bonici with us on the line. Um, we also have uh, the, the KSU President um, William Paruda with us. And we also have Ian Mitsud from the churches uh, Secretariat for Catholic Education. Hi guys, thank you very Hello. much for joining us today. Uh, I'd like to say that I also invited the, the independent schools, but they, they couldn't make it today, because um, it would have been interesting to get their perspective as well. Uh, but I have been receiving a lot, many, many, many questions uh, from the from concerned parents, from concerned students, from concerned uh, teachers. And so, Minister, I'd like to start on asking you some some sort of quick fire questions but first of all how are you uh, freedom day probably locked down like everyone else uh, and and obviously dealing with uh, i imagine thousands of of you know uh, worried or concerned students parents and teachers right yeah yeah good morning um, well it's it's freedom day today so so we reflect on the, the values which, which led us to, to freedom day, which are resilience, you know, and determination. And I, I think that those values will come in handy during the current period. Um, well, as you said, uh, my role now is to instill certainty and some answers uh, as much as possible. Of course, we we'll live in, in a situation where things change from one day to the next, but we're doing our best to be honest about the things which we are facing. You know, we, we, we're explaining to people and what is going on in the respective respective fields, and we're trying to, to provide that. It's been quite it's been quite interesting to see an element of transparency in the decision making because people are yeah. are kind of getting the idea. I think that decisions are being made um, as we go along, depending on 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 what on what's happening, right? But I just want to get to some specific questions. Maybe you can answer, and then we'll get into the discussion with the other with the other two guests. So first of all. Uh, parents are currently at home having to not only keep their kids busy but also educate them uh, at the moment you know in the absence of schools in the absence of teachers are they still going to be expected to pay school fees well this is a quite frankly this is a private issue between private schools and individuals who chose to send their, their, their kids there of course we're there to listen we're there to lend a helping hand we're there to, to listen to everyone's concerns but in reality, this is a purely private issue, which... So you don't have... Uh, there's no direction yet from the government on, on this? It's, an issue of, it's not an issue of direction. It's an issue of, you know, um, having private schools and, and, and private uh, individuals who entered into an arrangement, uh, you know, independently. Of but do you, think they should, do you think they should be asked to pay? Excuse me? Do you think they should be asked to pay? Well, I, I think that, that uh, teachers are still doing... doing uh, offering a, an educational service of course it's different from what we are accustomed to you know usually so yeah i think i think that the arrangements that must still stand okay summer schools are those cancelled summer school we have opened the the applications for summer schools for school aside it will be open and it will be starting in july so no it's not closed we are receiving applications but of course, closer to the date, we're going to update the people about what's going to happen there. Okay. Um, what about um, O level? So, so students who were meant to be sitting for their O levels, the O levels have now got uh, cancelled. How how are sixth forms going to determine who who gets into which school? You know, what, what, what's the process for anyone doing O levels? Welcome to my world, Chris. Uh, <laughs> this is something which I've been asking myself for the past days, and uh, with the help of everyone involved, we came up with a, with a, in my opinion, a fair solution. It's not perfect, but I think it's fair. So what we're going to do is that um, all the 6,000 students who usually sit for the O-level, so we're speaking about 6,000 families here, by and large, um, have the opportunity of being given an assessment, a predictive assessment, by MATSEC based on the mock exams, so that way the, you know the, the, they would be um, they would have a, an O level um, based on their mock exams uh, using a predictive science method. It's a scientific method utilized by MATSEC. If they choose to 
you know, fine tune their, their, their result or improve it, they can, they are free to sit for the September um, session. Okay. And, um, and what about A levels? I, I know that there are some students, um, first year sixth form students, who like to do their A levels um, on, in the first, some of their A levels in the first year, right? It's a practice that some, yeah. some yeah. students do. Will they be allowed to sit for the September exams? Yeah, sure. Of course, they are, they are allowed. They can sit for the September session. But um, to, be, to be totally fair and honest with you, there is an issue with regards to the reset of those sessions. So we're saying that um, those students can sit for the, September, for the September session and that's it. While those students are claiming that they should have the right for a reset in December. The issue is that um, uh, the experts at METSEC are advising me against having a reset in December because that way they, they would be in a position where they would have to study for the resets while at the same time studying for the original course they would be undertaking. Mm. But I think, you know, we're going to sort it out in the coming days. I'm going to discuss with Metz because I think that the, the people who are claiming that they could have the right of a reset have a very strong argument. September might also be optimistic, right? Are you, are you, um, re are you preparing yourself for the eventuality of uh, not being able to, to have exams in September either? Well, we have come up, some people, well, let's, let me put it this way, some people have told me, so why did you, did, did you kick off the camp to September? Why did you postpone them to September? September is so far away. Uh, we chose September because from the information we have, it's the um, safest potential earliest date to hold exams in, in that period. Um, but of course, things can, 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 can change from one day to the next. Um, I'm confident that people are obeying the instructions of the educational authorities. You know, today is a beautiful day outside. The health authorities, you mean? Uh, health authorities, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Health authorities. Outside, it's a beautiful day. The sun is shining. If we manage to keep people indoors today, then, you know, yeah. I'm confident that we will make it. So today is a very... What is the plan B? So, so for example, are, are you considering electronic exams? I, I know that there are some countries that, that you know, there are some software tools that can be used to, to do proper exams online, is that? Yes, of course, um, I have already discussed with, with, with the rector and the university authorities the possibility of, of um, having to go to um, online exam systems. Of course, it, it would be a first for Malta. It's, it's easier than it, than it sounds easier than it, it actually is. But um, yes, we're discussing a plan B in such a situation. However, if we, I'm sure that if we, we're, we're disciplined and we obey the instructions of the health authorities, um, I think we can control the spread of coronavirus by then. And, and, and hadn't there been quite an ongoing discussion about abolishing exams altogether? Isn't this sort of uh, a time to just bite the bullet and say, then we'll do this now? Well, I don't think it's fair to do this now in such extraordinary circumstances. Um, I'm a fan of assessments, you know, and personally, uh, I prefer assessments than exams because I think, you know, you cannot be judged by a, sing on a single day. You, you can have a brilliant person who on that day, um, you know, that doesn't concent concentrate and, you know, he's marked for the rest of his life. That's a bit unfair. And, and maybe now there's another but, day to, to assessments because... Uh, just in case there's a worldwide pan pandemic. A couple of questions that we're receiving yeah. from, the, from the readers, from the viewers. So one of yeah, them, I, I, That's why I'm looking to, to, towards my right. Because yeah. I, 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 let, me, let me curate them for you, because there are a lot of specific yeah. ones that are quite difficult to, to get through, but I do have a couple I want to ask. One is, what do you tell teachers who are currently not, um, you know, following, not, not providing any material to students online. I know a lot of teachers are going out of their way to prepare uh, great resources for, for parents and, and students um, online, but some, some teams aren't. Well, the absolute majority are, 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 doing, are going out of their way to, to, to provide teaching online. Um, so, some individual cases, well, you had, you had teachers, you know, who, who, who did not do that. Uh, I, I appeal um, for all teachers to, to, to do their best in those circumstances. People are judge, judging you. I've been hearing a lot about the need of um, uh, increasing the respect 
in, in the teaching professions, you know, the teachers are telling me all the time, well, we need to, we need to feel respected. And I think that um, through those actions, by, by going out of your way and, you know, helping the students, uh, keeping on with their education system, okay. um, you know, we we'll get, we'll get, we'll get a lot of, of, of gratitude for that. Another question is, what if there's a school that doesn't do mock exams? I believe. Yeah, I, I, I'm told. I'm told there is there are there is one one particular school which did manage to do the mock exams. It's not a government school, yeah. but, but I mean we have to cater for every student. And there are some other schools which did not do all mock exams. So consultations are underway between Matsek and those schools to try and reach a solution. But uh, definitely, um, I would not stop something which can be of benefit for 6,000 students because of one particular class. But um, every student is important and we're going to, 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 to find a solution. And, and, and we'll get to some other questions even when we've got the other guests on the line. But just before we move on to them, I'd also like to ask you, if I'm a student that wants to go abroad to study, um, obviously now travel, uh, travel is banned, you know, I'm going to get my exam results in, in September and December, um uh, is this a hopeless solution is well that it, 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 it is the downside of, of of what we have proposed so what we have proposed is very good but it's not perfect it has it has its downsides one of the downsides is that the students have to wait until um after september to get the results of their a levels which might be too late for some um european institutions in the field of education some some, some institutions in education in England, for instance, request entry before September. But I'm sure that those institutions will not take this year as being a business as usual. I'm sure that, you know, they have their own problems at home. For instance, I haven't yet um, read about a similar package of the decisions in education in other countries. I think Malta might be one of the first, uh, which, which gave a package of decisions um, which spans from year four till till the end of, of university. So um, we, we're, co we're contacting the various um, authorities in Europe and we're trying to, to help and assist even those students. They are few in number, but it doesn't mean that being few in number, I mean, uh, you should, should be left outside in the way. That's okay. not the case. So, so I'd like to bring on um, Ian Mifsud now as well. Um, Hello again. Ian is a... Uh, is, uh, I think originally an art teacher, but is now the director. Uh, I didn't know that, that he used to be an art teacher. <laughs> That's my subject, yes. Uh, director at the Church's Secretariat for Catholic Education. So you're here representing, um, you know, the, the, the Church's education yes. sector, which, as we know, is a really yes. important sector. Um, I'd, I'd like to know a couple of things from you. First of all, whether you support the decisions and whether you were, uh, you know, uh, part of the consultation uh, process for these decisions, uh, yes, and and whether you are seeing any any gaps in in, in the, the package so far. Well, uh, certainly we support. We have been we have been involved in the decision. So the decision is is a collective one. We we do appreciate that nothing is perfect, as the minister has been explaining. Um, but we believe this is the most valid and just decision so far that we could ascertain. Um, discussions continue and we will try to find ways on how this can be even more just and valid. But yes, we fully support the decision taken. Uh, with regards to gaps, uh, inevitably, yes, I've been seeing the comments of, of some parents cropping up. We do know of, of a few of our schools who have issues with a number of exams and those are being discussed. Yeah, the minister has already referred to a number of our schools who did not sit for a number of mock exams and those are being um, addressed. Regarding, regarding the gaps, obviously there will be. But go ahead, Chris. Regarding regarding the comments, Minister, maybe maybe you can spend the rest of Freedom Day answering them one by one. Because well, there wouldn't be much of freedom on my part. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I want to um, I want to ask Mr. Um, um, obviously schools are are under financial pressure, like every like every business, like every organization is under financial pressure today. Um, I imagine the church uh, is, in a, is, is also in a situation where, you know, donations that they, they used to receive uh, at mass, they're no longer receiving those donations, right? 
Um, I know that in church schools, many of the fees are, are donations or, or voluntary, right? Uh, so we don't have fees, we have donations, voluntary donations, yes. Yeah, so I'm wondering what, what the situation is financially and whether you are asking the government for support and minister whether the government is giving support to private schools because there seems to be a bit of, uh, it, it's not super clear yet, you know, the minister for the economy is saying that, that, that they will be included, there's an issue of code. So just to start with you, Ian, what's the financial situation? So every sector has a very different reality. Thanks to the 1991 agreement that had established between the, the Republic of Malta and the Holy See, we have reassurance of reimbursement of salaries of teachers. So at least we have the greatest part of the financial burden, which is being taken care of because we get reimbursement from the state already. Obviously, donations are very, very important because we can't keep maintaining the schools and up upgrading the schools for today's needs had it not been to the parents' support. Um, we do appreciate that this is a particular context and everybody is in hardship. So obviously we will be very, very sensitive in terms of that hardship. Whoever is in a position to support, that support is always welcome. But we are definitely experiencing this in a very different way than the independent sector is, for example. And Minister, what, what, what do you tell the schools who are begging for financial assistance right now? Well, we are, we are undertaking um, a, a very, very healthy consultation exercise. And there is a task for this work which was established from the word go. Ian has, has also been part of this, this whole um, consultation setup. Uh, we, we're, we're in this together, we're in the same boat. We're going to, we want to make sure that we pass through this period, you know, by showing solidarity one to another. It's not the time to, to, to you know, to, 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 to okay. create divisions, but we have to help each other. So I'd like to bring in uh, William Faruja, who's the, the president of the uh, Stu University Students Council. Hi, William, how are you this morning? Hi, good morning. Okay, thanks for coming. William. He's a very bright man. I mean, yes, great. Yeah. Uh, let's Thank see. You. So, so I, before before we, we do um, hear from you, William, I just want to finish off one question with Ian, which is um, regarding, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll discuss this um, together as well, regarding children who are maybe from disadvantaged households or, or even abusive households, who today are in a situation where, you know, they're, they're forced to stay at home, they, they don't have the, the relief of, of school, so to speak. Um, uh, Minister, there's also some some children who don't have access to to laptops and and might not be able to to uh, you know get 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 the right resources online. Um, do you confirm this, Ian? Like, are you are you seeing this from in terms of the gaps? Definitely, e equity is always an issue in society, and it is an issue also in education. When circumstances such as these we're experiencing currently occur, okay, obviously equity issues become even more problematic. What we need to keep in mind is, when I was discussing this with my colleagues, um, I'm, I'm, I'm equating this as if we're on the aeroplane and we're being explained that as soon as the oxygen masks drop down, you first need to put on the mask on yourself before helping on the rest. And we are currently still learning on how to place the oxygen mask ourselves. We are all adjusting to this reality. And in the meantime, we are trying to start assisting all those who are in, in need. We do have support also of psychosocial professionals who are in touch with, with the most vulnerable as well. So we do know of, of some students who are at risk of marginalization, um, unfortunately some abusive environments as well. These are not the majority, but obviously these are the most um, persons who may be at risk and therefore we are we are taking care of those as well as much as possible so william um talk to us a bit about the student realities right now so students who have just had their exams postponed or cancelled or or you know universities maybe there isn't such clear direction at university as well um do you support these measures do you have any uh, issues with them yourself so when it comes to, well, let's start with university first. When it comes to university students, I think the biggest pain was the uncertainty, uncertainty and the lack of clarity about the way forward. And I think that was addressed partially this week when there was a decision which announced that exams in the traditional sense will not be happening in June on campus. So there will be alternative assessment methods. Now, some anxiety remains because students are still uncertain as to how they will be assessed in their respective units. So we urge um, the faculties and um, anyone who's taking these decisions to um, take them as soon as possible for the sake of the students. But again, we understand that this is something new and 
even for for lecturers and for exam setters, this is quite challenging. So we understand that. And um, also, I mean, the switch into online wasn't. I mean, it's not simple, and no, no, no one has been through this. So. Um, lectures online are completely new, both to the lecturer and both to the students. So it, they, it took some adjusting. And I mean, um, I, I'm very, very happy with the with the amount of lectures that are being held now online. So um, thank you to all the lecturers who actually put in a massive effort. As so what's being used, William? Uh, are they using Zoom? Are they using, you know, these, these sort of video chat? Um, there's, of... there's a mix. There's a mix. So I, and I think it's helped that there's a mix because people use whatever they find most comfortable. Um, it's either Zoom, um, sometimes Google Meet. It's ca it can be also uh, a recording of a lecture. So there are quite a few different methods. And I think as long as the quality is decent, then um, I, I would leave it to whoever whoever is giving the lecture to choose the most comfortable um, software. Yeah, I just want to bring up two other points uh, regarding students. One of them is the economic reality, because students, like everyone else, you know, is, is uh, are, are in a situation where they might not be um, able to work summer jobs, for example. We know that although we get a stipend in Malta, that's not enough to cover, um, you know, certain, certain basic things as well. Um, and we'll also talk about jobs, but let's talk, talk about the, the the economic reality facing students today. What, what do you make of it? I think I think that's also worrying. So that's one of the other pain points for students at the moment. As you know, most students, especially at university, tend to be quite independent, and they try to work to get some income. So you know, to, to be self-sufficient, basically. Um, the issue is that most of these jobs are the jobs which aren't actually. Um, which have been stopped. So, is it be it wait, being a waiter, working in a bar, detail? Um, some students do have a professional job, which oh, might be, which might still be, I mean, going on, which is good. But um, that's part of it. And the other part is, in reality, students who are great, who will be graduating this year, are uncertain as to whether the job market will be as open as it was before. So that's also a, an issue. Because that's mean, a really, it's a really big change, right? I mean. Uh, up to a couple of months ago, this was a uh, total employees market, right? No matter, like almost zero unemployment, no matter you know what, you 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 you'd find yourself a pretty good job or, or several. Now we're going to face a situation where uh, even people who have a uh, high level of experience in the working world will struggle to find to find work, let alone all these fresh graduates. graduates. Yeah. And now, and now we're we're facing this. Uh, what I mean, this is a situation which came upon us in quite a short period of time. So people were completely un quite, quite unaware, basically. No one, no one knew it was coming, and people now have to start adapting. And I think most of the measures we are seeing now are measures as adapting to the situation. And I think no measure is perfect. However, in light of the situation, it, I mean, they, it was the best option we could come up with. And yeah. um, I thank the, the ministry also for consulting with, with students on, on the matter, especially when it comes to the A-level and O-level examinations. Again, as I said, this isn't a perfect solution. I can, I can comment on them and find um, issues with all of them. I mean, mainly with the A-levels, students have been studying and are preparing for their exams, which start in less than a month. So, I mean, they're being asked to postpone their studies, basically. But I mean, what can you do? I mean, their health comes first. And I think we need to appreciate the fact that this, is, this isn't comfortable and easy for anyone. And can I, can I just it's speak, the best solution. Can I just yes? that back to, to the minister? Uh, minister, we received many, many, many emails from people who are saying, OK, we are taking care of their health in terms of you know, not, not putting them uh, in, in, in large groups for exams, etc. But in terms of their mental well-being, you know, yeah. being, being uh, having prepared for your exams in a month's time and being told now you have to wait five or six months to to um, to actually start the exams. That's that's a massive strain, right, on students. I'm just yeah, throwing yeah. back when yeah. I was doing A levels. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe I can co comment on a point on on the IT access because that's crucial. We have asked William before. Um, uh, we have we have asked our our principals of all government colleges to give us the number of students whom they know that they do not have internet access. And they gave us um, an amount which is very similar to the students which are who are on Scheme 9. Scheme 9 is a scheme where we give actually food at school to students who come to school without lunch. 
we are delivering those lunches, even right now through the use and services of, of the, the archpriests in the villages who are helping us a lot. Um, actually, we are going to give internet connection to uh, a chunk of those students, because some of them do have internet connection, um, but we're going to give the, uh, the uh, internet connection to a chunk of those students who actually do not have internet connection connection right now that's a many of them might need laptops as well right because you've got yeah, a yeah. Where yeah. their parents yeah. are having yeah. the laptops yeah. Yeah. yeah and we're, we're also we're also uh, utilizing other computers and laptops which we have at the education department which are not utilized or not used to be able to have internet and computer access to those kids mm-hmm. if you know of any kids who need who need help or assistance please please feel okay. free to a email a nice and, uh, appeal from the ministry yeah. If, uh, a nice appeal from the minister that if there are people uh, in, in serious need of, of either internet connections or, or devices uh, to get in touch with the with the ministry. Um, yes. also, and even if there are people who have, you know, an extra laptop or an extra, you know, uh, computer which they don't use, yeah. I think I think it, it, it is the time to, to be so. Or maybe, uh, maybe solidarity with each other. Or maybe there are also some companies who are willing to to put the bill of the the internet uh, connections for these for these families. I've got to ask you a question because people keep asking it about um, child care yeah. centers, child care centers, and and kindergartens. Uh, what's the? Situation? Yeah, they they will remain closed until 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 the the end of this current current um, academic year. If they're asking about about whether the the employees are going to be paid, because it's not clear. Because, for instance, I'm seeing this comment: child care centers and kindergarten, please. And um, so, if the question is whether they are going to open, the answer is no. They are not going to open until the end of the current um, uh, academic year, at least. Um, uh, with regards to whether they are going to be paid, um, uh, we're going to, you know, issue issue instructions to descend in, in, the, in the coming days. Uh, please understand that there are a lot of sectors who are demanding financial assistance from the government and we have to make to be very clear um, to whom we're going to give assistance and how much. So, so uh, and, and please bear with me a couple of days and this will be cleared as well. And to those people asking um, about how to keep their, their kids motivated to study, maybe we'll also do another program uh, later on yeah. this week with some, with some uh, motivational or, or, or uh, you know, educators who can help us out. But I do want to get into the discussion. We only have 10 minutes left. I do want to, uh, we've spoken a lot of, about a lot of specifics, <clears throat> but I do would, would like to get into the discussion on whether there is anything to learn from this crisis from an education perspective. And I'd like to start with, with um, Ian um, to, to know sort of, how are you looking at, like, if we were to look beyond the immediate, beyond the negativity, beyond the, the very serious situation that we're in, um, are there lessons to be learned and are there things to, to, to retain uh, from, from this crisis? Definitely. Uh, I, I try to be as positive as, as positive as always in all circumstances and I do believe that also over this very dark cloud there is a silver lining as well to it. Um, one might say that, well, yes, we're experimenting with online learning and that may be the very evident um, benefit. However, that is a somewhat of a superficial benefit because that is just a channel, a tool, an assistance to education. What I hope will remain after this experience is that people realize that we need to keep our priorities right. Uh, education is about information and formation. There are those two components. We touched the minds and the hearts. Uh, the Pope, who is a far wiser man than I am, also includes the hands, because he explains very, very well that once we educate the heart and the mind, and then we have to actuate through the hands. And I do really hope that individuals really seek to rediscover themselves, their meaning in life, to reconnect with each other, with their loved ones, because that is where education can actually happen. And that is also for our educators, for my colleagues. I'm a very proud um, educator myself. I'm a teacher. I always felt I'm a teacher at heart, and I will remain so. And, and I hope that all of this will continue even when we will start enjoying again also the material benefits in this life. But those are so ephem- ephemeral. Th- th- those will pass. But it is all the meaning, the well-being, the peace, internal peace that we get when we work in close solidarity with each other for the benefit of those whom we are serving. 
that we really feel feel well amongst us. That is what I hope will remain after this. So this this sort of spirit of um, even you know spending time with family and 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 being being together, right? I hope to be allowed some time as well because you know after this this havoc has has occurred, I'm I'm missing my family because I'm being locked in my study and and. All of the, the meetings are continuing for hours on end. So, yeah, yeah. In, in fact, that's, that's another interesting topic, which is you know it's very easy to reach burnout in the situation where where you know you don't leave work, you're you're always at work at home. You know, um, William, what, what are you seeing as the as the positives or, or the takeaways uh, that we can start looking into maybe to be more prepared in the future, or maybe also to just you know, be inspired by this time and, and find something useful from it. I think, first of all, this has teaches te this teaches us the value of our mundane, normal routine, basically, because, I mean, you get to value the, the coffee you used to have in the morning and the rush before the lecture and meeting your friends. The, these things have all changed. The distance on with online has been reduced, but it, you can feel it. You, you miss the social interaction, and that's what people are mainly missing. I think so. I think that will be one of the things we get from it. So we will start to appreciate more um, what we used to not even consider before. Um, I think the education system will also um, benefit from this experience. So I mean, the the benefits of online are there. Um, the benefit we get to see also the benefits of a physical lecture. But I think we, the an online system can also be used to um, help and add to the the normal education system. So I think this can be maybe used in the future. I think what we also um, see from this is that, I mean, there are certain areas in society who are disadvantaged to to an extent which isn't normally visible, but in times of crisis like these, it becomes even more visible and we need to also think of these people. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about people who basically don't have a quiet area or a study in their house. So they cannot have um they cannot focus on lectures they cannot focus on their work this was already a, pro a problem before in fact we we're speaking with both the university and the ministry about the possibility of extending our library opening hours but now that the library is closed apart from not having access to physical books um a lot of students don't have any space to study and to to work quietly and to focus so that's also a problem which has been brought up and i think um a takeaway from this is we need to start catering more for, for these people, for people who are, don't have um, the facilities at their own house. Because we, it's easy to just uh, to just think that everyone uh, has the simplest, size, simplest room, um, which is quiet and cut off from the rest of the household uh, to, to study and to work in without disturbance. And that's something which we really need to focus on as well. Thank you very, very much. Um, Minister, let's turn back to you. Um, we're seeing a lot more more comments over here. So people being asked about uh, having to pick up books from schools and whether that's, that's a help. That is an issue, Chris. That is a big issue. I, I've been receiving loads of emails about it. There are people who are saying, "Well, um, I want my my books back. I need them for, for for the schooling at home." But then there are others who are saying that is that is you know something which is dangerous to do. In today's times, so my appeal is that if we um, organize it properly, where people can go um, separately, keeping social distance, I think I think books can be returned to to, to the kids and, and to the parents. Okay, um, and and just uh, again, what happens if September um, doesn't uh, it, it doesn't materialize as the day when we could do exams? Wake me up when September ends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In reality, um, uh, I, we do not have a time crystal in our hands, unfortunately, of course. And we have to prepare for all, all situations. But I, I believe it, it all depends on how much we, as a country, are disciplined to apply social distance and uh, to flatten the curve, the, the famous curve, which the health authorities are repeatedly uh, telling us to help them to achieve. Um, well, September is, is, is far away enough to actually be able to flatten the curve. If we manage to flatten the curve, I think, I think um, I'm confident about a positive outcome. If we don't, because it's at the end of the day in our hands, uh, we have to plan for, for other solutions. Uh, Minister, is there a helpline or a website where people can ask you more specific questions? Like, like you know, because it seems there's a massive demand for it, just judging by the comments that we're, 
that we yes, yes, I'm trying to keep up with my emails. Uh, it's not only me, it's also Frank and, uh, and Stephen at the ministry who are, who are working all the time to answer all the questions. We're going to issue FAQs. Maybe you can help us, Chris, with, with your website to, to mm -hmm. communicate them. And um, there is also the 2598-1000 number, 2598-1000, where people can, can call for anything related to education, even if a kid is lonely, if there is a kid, a kid missing the teacher, you can call there and you can get in touch with the teacher and hear her voice. I think that's yeah, that, that's, that, that was quite uh, an interesting one. So I'm, I'm putting, is that, this is the number, yeah, right? That's five, it, 1,000. Yeah. 1,000, so, so whoever's watching and has a, an, another specific question or complaint or criticism, uh, maybe maybe call up the number and also if your, if your um, school children are, are suffering from, you know, yeah. uh, missing their teacher, they could get in touch as well. We get that a lot, Chris. So we get, get a lot of, of uh, emails from kids telling me, listen, I want to get in touch with my teacher or, or wow. with that particular teacher. Can you help me? That's, okay. that's um, so, so let's. We've got a few minutes left, Minister. Maybe we can take it back to the discussion we were having about uh, any lessons to be learned, and also um, wh whether you know the day after this crisis is is resolved, whatever that means, whatever that looks like. Uh, do you think it's going to be easy to get get uh, parents to send their kids back to school? And 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 are you aware that that um, schools are going to be the last? The last thing that, that that's open, right? Is, I think yeah, you yeah, that is the principle which guides us. So, uh, schools are the last um, institution which gets back to normal. First, uh, everyone else gets back to normal. Then it's the schools which opens last. We're going to follow that principle, of course. Um, with regards to the positives which have come out, I think that you know there is that proverb that necessity is the mother of invention, and most of the things which we have been talking about a lot of time. Uh, we, it was, now was the time to invent them, you know, inventing online learning, inventing, inventing assessment rather than, than exams. And we, I think that we're going to find out that um, there were a lot of positives to be drawn out from the education point of view from this experience. Like, for instance, the assessment at year, year six level. I think that is something which we need to study and see whether we can, we can you know, fine tune it and and improve upon it for the years to come. And there were other experiences as well, which are which are good. Most mostly, the sense of solidarity and you know comradeship, which which I'm sensing in the educational sphere. People are casting aside their day-to-day -day issues, and we are pulling the same rope together. And I am very, very, very grateful. I would not have, we would not have managed to do so much in so little time alone. Thank you very, very much uh, to all, uh, to you, Minister, and to our other guests, Ian Mistu and William Faruja. Um, I think this was a, an interesting discussion, and maybe the start of, of many more discussions online about how uh, education uh, is being affected and, and will also continue to be affected as, as this pandemic uh, continues and probably even after that. Um, I, I just want to remind the, the viewers that um, probably a lot of the questions being asked today on 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 this on this video, um, I, I imagine the ministry will also take a look at and and, and maybe try and try and answer. There's also the number that was mentioned um, earlier that you can call if you have any. Uh, just put it on the screen again if you have any queries. Nine eight one thousand. Magic number. Yeah. The magic number, yeah, a bit of a helpline. Um, and feel free to uh, load the minister's inbox as well, as I'm sure. <laughs> as I'm sure. Please do. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Ian Mifstu, and, and good luck you. For, for all your efforts um, with the church schools as well. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, William Faruja. Uh, keep, keep being the voice for students. COVID calls will be, um, will be with you again uh, tomorrow. Um, and, and we'll continue these discussions, you know, on, on the effect of, of COVID, on the effect of COVID-19 on the country, on all aspects of our lives, uh, including, you know, on this ironic Freedom Day holiday where we're all uh, stuck at home or in, or in empty offices. Like myself. Thank you very much. And we'll be with you again tomorrow.